producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the element. Only on the element. It is Wednesday. I feel like Wednesday only officially starts when Mr. Instro is here. So, Mr. Instro is here. I'm here. Oh, I'm so super excited. Hello, friend. Hey. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I was actually just watching uh, the week before last show. Yeah. And um, I really like the energy and the you know the the chemistry that we have is kind of cool yeah bro i feel like i haven't sat across from you in forever that's why i'm like super super excited mm, cuz i'm like oh my gosh and it's so strange like so for people who don't know mr instro is here every day um he does make sure that this show sounds absolutely amazing yeah. but it's a different part of the brain and it's different energy when we do the producer spotlight so i'm really really happy that we're back on top form life sometimes happens sinus infections other things mm, other things mm. but we are here and we're rocking out with you and so we hit eight o'clock. So forty-five minutes to go before we make way for hip hop on the grind. Wednesdays are for hip hop. So, friend, who are we looking at tonight? Okay, so um, man, it's so beautiful that we are covering this guy because we actually spoke about Nicolay two weeks ago. Okay, and now it's more fitting to cover him because yesterday. Uh, his first album with Fonte together mm-hmm. as Foreign Exchange it was celebrating its 17th anniversary. Hectic. So what's happening today is we're going to play music that specifically comes from this album, Ooh. this connected album. And I'm just going to try and share these stories um, that created, you know, the the foreign exchange. I mean, Nicolet is a standalone by himself, but right. I, I thought since it was like uh, it's such a, I would say it's iconic. I mean, it's 17 years old, and it brings a wealth of memories uh, for for a lot of hip hop heads. Right. So, and even how it came about is so interesting, and I can't wait to share that story with you. But that doesn't take away the brilliance that Nicolay is as a producer by himself. He's got his own records. He's got his own buzz. So he's his own man. But I, I felt like let's let's celebrate Foreign Exchange because this was a monumental album that was released yesterday 17 years ago all righty mr instro coming through with the content curation what you know about that so i'm gonna give you a very very quick bio as mm. we normally do and then i'm gonna let mr instro take over as the professor that he is sure. so nicolay was born and raised in the netherlands classically trained multi-instrumentalist uh played in a number of hip-hop and r&b bands around his homeland but it wasn't until 2000 that he decided to start producing his own beats and 2002 little brother mc fonte coleman stumbled across one of them on ok player's message board Mm. and asked if he could put his rhymes over it and soon a friendship and a musical relationship were born now this collaboration which they called the foreign exchange led to an album connected in 2004 after which nicolay continued producing tracks for little brother and uh, he released uh, city lights volume 1.5 first only online and then through BBE Records in 2005. Yeah. So shout out to Marissa Brown from All Music. She's the one who puts together this bio. And I'm going to let Mr. Instro take us through more and more and more and more. Right, right. So you know what really makes this album special, mm-hmm. right? Um, this this thing is done like it's, it's probably normal nowadays. But in 2001, 2002. Yes. This is like we're still still dealing with dial up internet, you know. You exactly we're dealing <laughs> we're dealing with the introduction of cyberspace, right. right? So big up to the roots, yeah. Big up to the roots for establishing for being in the forefront of you know thinking ahead uh, for them to come up with this uh, message board, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, player, shout out to Okay, player, such a huge platform. True. And, you know, um, at that time, it's like, yeah, you needed to be educated. You know, uh, internet was, especially for people like 
us who are in in South Africa who who really like it was still a pretty much more expensive exercise, right? right? But they, I mean, obviously they're there it's America and it's the the Netherlands. So I, I guess their even speed was picking up, and they were starting to connect on a much easier uh, level, right? So because of OK Player and the discussions that they were having, these hip hop discussions. Um, Nicolay, in fact, <laughs> Nicolay had actually quit music. Hey. He 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 had decided that okay, I've been playing for these bands, you know, I've been doing the school thing. Oh, actually, and he he uh, studied musicology, right? Mm. So he went to university and studied musicology for seven years, Heck and he still didn't get the degree. <laughs> Yo. Yo, let me t- let me t- yo woo! seven years and you still didn't get to finish. Whoo, crazy, right? That hurt. No, that's painful. <laughs> oh, crazy, that's so. Yeah. So 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 yeah. School will yeah. School will mess no, you up. No, school will drop you. Let me tell you something. When I got my honors degree, yo, everybody was like, so masters. I was like, ooh, yeah, ooh, must master. Hey, and I honestly have not been back to school. Yeah, it's my my brother yo. also just just finished his de- degree, and he was like, "Yo, I am not coming back here." You know, but you know what? If you are an academic or uh, a scholar, right, it eventually comes back yes. to find you because it's 2021 now. When I graduated for the last time, it was 2013. Mm-hmm. I have my eye on a course. Okay, okay. So I'm um, I'm surprised at myself, and um, it's not continuing in my journalism journey yeah, journey because yeah. i have an undergrad and honors in journal it's not that yeah and i mean that's 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 the thing sometimes as you grow as you experience life there are certain interests that you develop True. and obviously if you want to master those uh those interests then yo might as well go to school for them you know so i'm i'm all for you know going back educating yourself as long as you can you can afford to do so amen that's so true. so with nicole he was he was in school for for 7 years and he uh, <laughs> he um he dropped out because he had a difference in opinion you know about his music um philosophy okay. basically you know and i understand i understand when I was studying sound engineering, right? Yes. I don't got no diploma or anything like okay. that. I, I mean, I don't got a degree, okay. but it's a diploma in sound engineering. But I can tell you, I spent, out of the two and a half years that were there, I spent about like a year's worth at school, right? <laughs> if, my, if, my, if my mom found out, she'd uh, be very upset. But, you know, I still made it. I still, I still passed. Right. But it was mainly because I was already doing the f- the actual work mm-hmm. you know and i was actually getting paid for it so being at school was a no brainer for me i'd only go to school when i needed to and what was also I'm a test. dope i'm a tutorial you see <laughs> <laughs> what was also dope is that my lecturer right was a fan <laughs> yo what is happening today my lecturer was a fan so he would always give me a heads up not and he wouldn't give me anything for me to cheat or anything like that but he would always notice and was like yo i know you're doing your thing i saw but in class on wednesday yeah i saw you in durban on facebook i need you to be back on (laughs) on this day and this day he was so cool so so cool and i would be you know i'd always respect his wishes and I think that's pretty much why I um, why I passed, you know, because he was just always on on my back, and you know that's that's yeah. When when your philosophy is different, and they try and instill some some theory, and you're like, yeah, but I don't use this, you know, yes. I don't this, I don't relate to this at all, you know. And when I think back now. There's a lot, there's a lot that I'm using that I learned from back in the day, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's not really a waste of time. I'm not sure what Nicolay was doing <laughs> all those seven years, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that it added a lot to 
his sound that that we're listening to today you know and um also like yeah outside of the music thing he was obviously uh, uh technically inclined mm-hmm. um he had a, a decent studio setup and um he got a job uh because he felt like he was he was getting older and mm. he needed to pay the bills Ay. so yeah that's another reality you know yo i'm a responsibility you can't really be mad at somebody who 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 at the time you know music wasn't really doing much for him right and he wants to do this thing and i think it was actually smart that he decided to get a job and then at night when he had time then work on some beats get into uh internet discussions with other people that were interested in hip hop that's like very smart because it keeps the passion alive and then he was like yo okay i've got these beats that i've been working on post post them up and Fonte hears them and at the time 2002 2001 little brother was like the talk of the town yes you know they were like i remember yo shout out to my homie Terry Wiz Terry Wiz put me on to little brother and i've fallen in love with them ever since you know like they were just so fresh at the time and the way ninth wonder was sampling was just Yeah, it was ahead of its time then yeah. because a, a lot of us were like, okay, how do you actually do this? You had like a couple a few seconds to sample and he was just a a, a proud ambassador of Fruity Loops and he was just using it to its its fullest, you know, and we could hear it in the sound. So, yeah, little brother was big at the time. So, uh when 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 he had the interest in 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 Nickelay, I actually thought he would actually become a member of Little Brother. Mm. We actually need to find out somebody needs to ask Nicolay how like wh- why wasn't that an easier option, you know, because he was already part of, you know, the the whole movement. Um he also um if you listen to Connected, you you hear that there's everybody that was with Little Brother is on there. Mm. So it, it's easy to just take away the foreign exchange and just put little, little brother, brother there. there you know like it's uh, i wonder what the process was for them to actually decide okay no let's do something separate and then and, and i mean it works it works in hindsight because i think nicolay wouldn't have gotten his proper flowers as mm-hmm. a, a music producer if you know connected became a little brother in fact i think maybe ninth wonder would have been like the the person that overshadows it you know and did, did and you want to say the beyonce <laughs> 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 but yeah that describes it so well it really does yeah so so i guess in hindsight it's a very good uh decision that they made to actually come up with foreign exchange as a separate entity so yeah shout out to uh fonte and their uh you know foreign ex- i mean even the name yes the foreign exchange it tells you how everything happened you know them sending beats uh sending vocals and that's like a normal thing today but back but in back the day then- that was like futuristic that was like yo these guys made an entire album without having even met each other and that on its own is monumental because we had we had never heard of such a Something thing like that happened yeah. yeah and and they only met four months before the album was released that is intense all right we're going to take a music break 28 minutes after seven o'clock we're going to give you nick's groove by the foreign exchange and mr instro will still be here on the other side of this only on the element all right 28 minutes to go before we hit eight o'clock yo hey, this show has gone by very quickly 28 mm-hmm. more minutes of the producer spotlight and the element and then we make way for hip-hop on the grind because wednesdays are about hip-hop right here on massive metro so the producer spotlight we're taking a look at nicolay and mr instro is going to take us uh on another particular journey we just played you next groove mm-hmm. and uh, we had been speaking about you know how everybody kind of got together yes. we were asking why why not little brother why for an exchange we've moved on from that and we're going somewhere else yes so i mean shout out to nicolay because he never let that uh that buzz get to him mm. i know a lot of producers tend to uh get relaxed 
as soon as they get some sort of buzz going mm-hmm. um i mean at the time like i was saying little brother was big so i mean naturally connected was you know we we picked it up like very quickly and obviously because fonte was yeah oh, like a, a a different level of rhyming at the time so he was just very interesting as as both an an artist and a rapper right. you know he in fact he wasn't doing the singing thing uh, a lot on little brother until we got into the the nicolay project the, the connected project so um i think they sort of had like a a very dope energy towards each other where they could you know map out everything that they they were trying to experiment with right. you know what i mean I, and i think it also comes from a place where you've got nothing to lose you guys are literally just having fun i got my little brother thing i got my job back at home yeah. you know so we're literally just making music that just sounds good to us and um you even hear him in 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 his interviews nicolay that that's been his uh his mantra or his just making sure that the music is taken care of you're just you're just having fun with the music and it feels right L- right landmark says creating for art's sake beautiful yeah. beautiful and that's literally what they did you know they were creating for um art's for art's sake, sake right yes. And what's beautiful as well is that um at the time rap was still quite hard you know it was it was a hard everybody wanted to be you know yo I'm dope and yo yes. you can you very braggadocious there very we go strong. that's the word yes. yeah very braggadocious and we we uh, we wanted to to always come out like we're the best and uh he mentions uh using the the foreign exchange uh album art if you look at that it's actually a a dude somebody that looks somebody that looks a dude and a girl who was uh who's hugging each other right they they or they're kissing or something like that but when you look at the picture you realize that it's more uh relaxed mm-hmm. it's more I want to say sensual but like Intimate. that's yeah like it's it's very it's very it's not hard it's not hard at all and when you look at that album art and uh, as opposed to a little brother uh album art you sort of see the difference and when you hear it everything makes sense right yeah so it 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 also uh brings out the you know the 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 art that comes with releasing mu- music and making sure that that music is it 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 fits what you what you're trying to uh, uh, what the message the message that you're trying to get across visually okay so it's about you know soothing all or catering to all the senses you know making sure that visually you're creating the right picture right and the music also is uh is is traveling and it's it's getting to the right place and and also before you ask me <laughs> I, i need to say that i think m- more than anything it's imp- it's important as a producer to not limit the artist in whatever they wanted to do mm. i think it would have been easy for nicolay to say hey man can you hear how raw these beats are man and then you're gonna want to sing on this like please don't you know like like yo do the lb stuff do the little brother stuff you know so uh, nicole was open to the ideas and i also think it adds to the fact that uh fonte had the space to do what he wanted to do mm-hmm. you know the guy is like 50,000 kilometers away you know so there's no real uh interference it's not like being in, in the studio together exactly right. and they say they prefer to work like that even when nicolay moved eventually moved to, to the states to the states they still did the second album just sending each other Hectic. stuff right yeah because that if it, if it ain't broke don't fix it don't fix it so what i was going to what i was going to ask and say is um cuz you you're speaking about you know having having everything kind of married together you know the sound the visuals mm. and i don't think that that's something that was necessarily the case back in the day you're seeing a lot more of it now, now yeah. um cuz i'm just trying to think back like 
even if you look at something like a like a get rich or die trying right by 50 cent yes. that cover is very hard gangster you know Absolutely. bullet hole through the through the window and everything and then there's 21 questions yep on there yep. yep um and i think that it's only now in this era that we're starting to see where kind of everything sort of marries together the texture and the feel yeah. if you look at pretty ugly soil everything kind of marries Fits. together yeah. when you when you see the soil video and when you listen to soil the project you can tell that this is a family yeah absolutely i, I mean was the case before right 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 it wasn't necessarily the case before but i think there still was like a it was important w- how you were presenting mm. y- your body of work you know and i think it's a it's a very important thing that nicolay said about how they were presenting their album it was rap i mean there's a lot of cussing there there's a lot of you know what i mean like it's it it, it, it was more than just you know uh like this r&b influenced neo soul influenced thing you know uh-huh. there, there was still elements of really raw rap which is why i i naturally gravitated towards it you know what i mean and and looking at that cover i promise you i pr- at that time looking at it i would have gone like nah this ain't it <laughs> you know this ain't this is probably this is probably something I'm not this is probably another Nicolet that I don't know Hexing. you know that kind of thing <laughs> but it's it's brilliant because when you li- when you listen to the music you sort of like understand that they weren't trying to make you think of just the raps right they wanted you to to capture the whole uh the essence. whole essence of what they were trying to do you know and that, I find that beautiful and that's one of the reasons why this album specifically is monumental. All right, it's 20 minutes to go before we hit 8 o'clock. We're going to take a musical break and then we're going to come back and talk more. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, there's 60... Yo, 16 minutes. Wait, no. Now there's 15 minutes to go before we hit 8 o'clock. This time is going by mad, mad, mad quick. Mm. So uh, you're going to hear less of me and more of Mr. Instro. Uh, we are speaking on Nicolay on tonight's Producer Spotlight. Yeah. And we have like a couple of places to go. I'm super excited because uh, from what Mr. Instro was telling me, um, they're very, very important. So what is the story about sampling and not and giving up on it? Okay, so um, I mean, when you listen to Connected, you you'll hear that he was still heavy on 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 sampling mm-hmm. um but there are some tracks that that aren't sampled which he actually just played okay um at that time and hey man it was tough times for them because when you sample mm-hmm. and uh, your song does well yes ah uh, the labels come for you hey hey ah uh, they come for you and 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 they tell you that yo we want all of the publishing you know we want you you can't have anything you know and that's how brutal they were so gradually he decided as a business move that he would actually just stop sampling altogether but i think i being the producer that i am i'm pretty confident that he hasn't stopped sampling i would just say that he would probably not release music Mm -hmm. that that's sampled you know what i mean if you're trying to work on a record you just want to make sure that you have full range or and 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 full decision making uh rights to be able to if the movie wants to use it if especially because foreign exchange has a a a specific like an ambient sound nyana where it, it makes it so perfect yeah. if you want to put the music o- on movies and if you're sampling whoa, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're gonna have some issues you know so shout out to Nicolay for being smart about that and realizing that you know we're, we're actually also getting into an era where it, you, you're free to experiment with the music that yeah. that you want to do, you know, because at the time the neo soul sound was emerging, and you know your Jill Scotts, your you know yes. your music soul child, you know that era was just coming up, and it was sounding so beautiful, True. and and wanting to be part of that is is I mean it's it's almost um, a no brainer because. 
uh, Fonte with his voice and the way he writes is like it just makes everything fit so well right which which also uh leads me to their second album right uh leave it all behind that's completely like that's a soul you know r&b neo soul album like it's so beautiful it's very uh chilled very mature bro you're glowing <laughs> i'm glowing because I've got so many memories with that album <laughs> like it's crazy it's actually crazy that music is that powerful that True. I could I could start talking about an album and I could just get a flood of memories of being in love and you know sharing music yes. and I mean at that time having music just having a CD meant something you True. know so if you're actually giving it to somebody and, and going you know ish, i thought of this i heard this music and i decided and i, to, of you. And I decided to, oh, you know what romantic I, mean? I told you i'm a romantic most <laughs> anyway <laughs> so 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 that was that was um um his i guess his entrance to not sampling at all right right and uh, for me I, th i think it was perfect it was perfect timing uh the release was uh, it was just right you know in fact when i heard the album i was like whoa fonte is gone <laughs> we ain't never gonna hear no fonte rapping you know but i mean he still went back to little brother thank god and it, it sounded very authentic i i love how beautiful the album is i love how foreign how beautiful foreign exchange is as a collective yeah. you know it sounds like music that is enforced it sounds very uh very nerdy man like <laughs> nerdy in the sense that these guys know exactly what they're doing you know and they're following their feelings more than anything you know these days but okay that's the buzzword buzzword organic right right so absolutely organic. so this this leaving sampling um was was business right mm. and when i hear business i think about things like you know you think suits and all this crazy stuff but then you also think of work ethic yes what is the pharrell method ah okay okay i love that you asked me that the pharrell method is like um it's being uh i guess uh strict about your music right okay and by that i mean pharrell work works in in the studio monday to friday from nine until five or, okay. for, or whatever the hours are so he literally turned his time in the studio like it was a nine to five like his oh. his hours were discipline to a certain time mm -hmm. you know I, i mean of course it may have not been nine to five but it was a specific time mm -hmm. that when that time comes if five o'clock hits i am leaving the studio i'm Hectic. going and it's a it's a problem for a lot of artists i, I i'll i'll admit that i'm one of them you know i i uh, yeah often when it's time to leave hey, that's when <laughs> it's <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah that's when it's nice but you know i understand i understand and that's pretty much i think one of the contributing factors to why he's lasted this long is because he's been able to discipline himself with his creativity and a lot of us as artists as creatives in general don't don't l listen to this rule it's so important to plug out as a creative it's important to plug out you cannot be doing creative stuff for 12 hours five days a week okay. i am telling you you oh, will okay. burn out okay okay oh, oh <laughs> that one's for me i you it's yeah. true though it's right, true because you know i mean we have the group you know midnight i'll be like hey, God, sorry, exactly. I, know, i know you're sleeping but i just had this great idea we'll talk about it exactly that's how my brain works but i think it's also because just as creatives we our brains don't necessarily align creativity and discipline it's like they live in different yeah. like provinces because yeah. it's creativity so why what do you mean there must be discipline how do i discipline something that's just happening organically right. and beautifully i'll and tell you i'll tell you the secret to the pharrell method the secret to 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 that is 
when you discipline yourself to know that at a certain time you are going to create mm-hmm. it means that whether you feel like it or not you create okay mm-hmm. and more often than not when you push yourself when you don't feel like it that's when you come up with the best ideas Okay. Trust so me, I know about this. I feel like you should have told me that this was an Aziza drag <laughs> session because everything that you just spoke about, I am guilty of. It reminds me of something I saw on Dinawa uh, Langa's Instagram. I think mm. it was literally just either last night or this morning. And um, she had basically, I think she had shared a, a post from someone else. And the quote essentially said, You are not always going to be motivated, so you are going to have to be disciplined. Yep. So now that this is coming at me again, I'm like, Okay, Nyagu's. Ding, ding. No, Nyagu's a thing, right? Ding, ding. So, a thing, right? Cause it's, it's, so, it's important. Trust me. And also, a lot of artists, and I, I know I mentioned this, but I have to mention it again. A lot of artists burn out mm-hmm. because they don't plug out. Sometimes you just need to go chill with your moms, you know, go chill, <laughs> go chill with your girlfriend, you know, your boyfriend. And not think about creating, you know, okay. like, because that's the thing that'll, that'll bring those ideas that it'll keep them coming. And also working from a place that doesn't rely on your feelings makes you very powerful. Ish, brah. Like you're dragging me. You no, know, I'm just saying. You know, my feelings are always at the fore all the time. I know. But it's know. fine. It's fine. I'll, um... I'll just have to learn to actually govern my feelings and not be governed by my feelings, which is very, very difficult for me. I'm, I'm like a bleeding heart all the time. Yeah. All right. So there's six minutes to go before we hit eight o'clock. Um, and everything that you just spoke to me about has me thinking about decisions, decisions, decisions. Yes. Decisions. I, I need you to read that, uh, that last Yes, which is part. exactly where I'm going to. Cool. So decisions. And the nugget here um, that we have is never take advice from someone who won't suffer the consequences of your decision. Yeah, that's straight up from Nicolay. One more time. Never take advice from someone who won't suffer the consequences of your decision. Yeah. As a creative, as a creative, you really need to get that mm. ingrained in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. You can't allow somebody to you know to tell you what to do when you know that they're not even gonna even feel the pinch of what happens should you not get to where he's saying you must go okay mr (laughs) (laughs) well that's been uh the aziza dragging session aka the producer's spotlight for this week and we officially wrap the show like that um, because we want to close out with some foreign exchange, I'm going to bank our knowledge of self for fortnight. Uh, okay. I'm going to bring it to you tomorrow. Um, thank you to everybody who plugged in. Thank you to Idi Amin. Uh, thank you to my team, to Mr. Instro, to Just Chules, uh, to Tepo Boeta, to Stefan, to King Maloya, and of course to you. Uh, catch us again tomorrow night, 6 to 8 p.m. Doing it all for the love of hip hop. In five minutes, the hip hop does continue with hip hop on the grind with over right the man who does control the hype he's coming through until 10 p.m so just because we're leaving you shouldn't go anywhere because he's definitely going to be holding you down remember in everything that you do make sure that you are in your element and while being in your element keep it pristine mr instro good night good night we love you guys we're <laughs> outie bar the producer spotlight with mr instro you can be a beat maker and not be a music producer but when you're a music producer you don't have to be a beat maker only on the elements